Has anybody ever done something incredibly nice for you out of the blue and you thought to yourself, that was so unexpected. Why did they do that for me? Why did they do that? I was deep in quarantine, about four weeks in, very deep in quarantine. I'm watching Tiger King, kicking back, probably episode three. And I, I don't even know what I'm wearing. I'm probably wearing like a jersey, I'm wearing some swim trunks. You know, I'm very deep in quarantine. I haven't had a haircut in about six weeks since Compton. Me and Christine are sitting on the couch, it's 10 at night. Doorbell rings, my ring, whoop, beep, beep, beep. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, it's 10 o'clock. Who's ringing the doorbell? Christine looks at me and she's like, who rings the doorbell? I'm like, I don't know, it's a human, it's COVID. What should we do? We haven't talked to people in a while. She's like, is it your family? I'm like, I don't know. So she's looking on the ring. She's looking outside. She's like, uh, it's humans. I'm like, okay, what do we do? I'm like, I don't know. We don't, I don't even think we own masks yet. Uh, so she's like, it looks like high school students. And I'm like, okay, what do you think they're gonna do? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, I think, you think they're here to hurt, hurt us? I'm like, I don't know. So, okay, so I, I get Newman. I'm like, Newman, you're gonna go outside. Newman's my dog. So Newman is like standing there and she's like, it looks like, high schoolers from our neighborhood. I'm like, do you think they're selling us stuff? I'm like, I don't know, it's 10 o'clock. So we start to open the door. Again, I don't even know what I was, I think I just had my shirt on backwards. So I open the door, I send Newman out, and they're like, hey! And I'm like, oh, it's Evan and Audrey. And they're like, hi! And I'm like, hey, hi. We haven't talked to people in a while, anybody at all. And they're like, and I'm like, is it my birthday? And they're smiling and they're like keeping six feet of distance. And they're like, no, happy Easter. I was like, oh, it's Easter. And they set down Rice Krispie treats, cookies. They give me a bag of candy. And Evan is like, happy Easter. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Easter tomorrow. And Audrey keeps handing Christine sugar cookies. They give us another bag of candy. And I'm like, what? Why? And they give us a card and they're like, because it's Easter, Jesus. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're the most kind people. I love all of you, but you are the best in youth tribe. And they, and they go, okay, that's it. And they just fade off into the distance of quarantine and drive off. Has that, has anybody, that was, the, that was like the most kind thing that happened in the first few weeks of quarantine. And we were so shocked and I just went and sat down and watched Tiger King and ate like five Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, Christine, do they want like money from me? <laughs> but so, I really didn't think that. But sometimes, isn't it funny when someone does something so ridiculously nice and you're like, why is that person so nice to me? I wonder if I could be like so-and-so. I wonder if I could start acting like them or being like them. I wonder if I could start acting like that teacher one day. And so as we finish this series, we've been going through this for about three weeks now. Matt talked about being overwhelmed last week and he did a really good metaphor with the bucket leaking. And so I've got a bucket today and we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna talk about filling ourselves up because I think so often what happens with our buckets and with our lives is that rather than letting ourselves uh, overflow with kindness and overflow with love to the people in our lives like Audrey and Evan, what happens? We pour out mean words, we pour out anger, we pour out bitterness, we pour out really nasty words to the people that are around us at school, don't we? Instead of pouring out kindness and compliments and saying, oh, you look pretty. Oh, here's some Rice Krispie treats. How come we don't do that more often? Why isn't it so easy to love people? It's hard to love people, isn't it? Why is it so hard to love on people? I think it's actually easier than we think. And I'm really gonna show you in the next 15 minutes that it's so easy to pour out love on the people around us. And there's this girl in the Bible named Mary. It's the other Mary. Sometimes we just hear Mary and we think Jesus' is mom. But there's another Mary and it's this young girl. She's a teenage girl. She's the sister of Martha. So we're gonna go to Mark chapter 14 and we're gonna look at the story of Mary. It says this in Mark 3. Mark 14, 3. 
It says, while he was in Bethany, this is Jesus, while Jesus was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume. Just so you know, this is probably worth $100,000 in today's money. They say this perfume was the most expensive in the entire world. They still have bottles of this perfume today that you can buy, and it's still incredibly expensive to buy. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than one year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She's done a beautiful thing for me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help at any time you want but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas, (laughs) somehow Judas gets put in this story. Then Judas, one of the 12, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. There's a lot going on in this story. The girl walks in, she barges in, the disciples are having dinner with Jesus. Jesus is apparently finished eating. He's sitting back. In comes this young girl, Mary. She's a teenage girl. She breaks open this expensive $100,000 bottle of perfume, pours it over Jesus's head, and then Judas and the disciples get mad and Judas leaves. So we're left with this question. As this girl, Mary, she, then she it says, apparently she sits down. Why would she do this? Why would she walk in with this most expensive bottle and pour it over Jesus's head? What would compel her to do this thing? What, what would compel her to do this amazing act of kindness and love and let this love just pour over Jesus? Why would she do this? I wrote down this. She couldn't help it. She couldn't help herself. She couldn't stop herself from doing this. And I think one of the secrets to her love, one of the secrets to her kindness was that she had been soaking up time with Jesus. She'd been soaking up all of this time over the last several months and possibly a couple of years with Jesus. If we read our Bibles and if you go back in the gospel, what you'll see in the gospel of Mark is there's another story with Mary and Martha, and a lot of us know this story. Mary and Martha are sisters, and it says that Jesus and a lot of the disciples were in Mary and Martha's house, and they're having dinner at Mary and Martha's house, and what happens? A lot of us know this story. Martha gets mad at Mary, and she says, Mary, how come you're not helping me? Who gets mad at their sister? How come you're not helping me vacuum the house? Well, Jesus is sitting at this table, and he's talking to a bunch of people as dinner is getting ready, And Mary yells at, or Martha yells at Mary and says, Mary, how come you're not helping me make any of the pasta? How come you're not helping? And what is Mary doing in that story? If you know your Bible, Mary is sitting there. She's sitting down, just listening to Jesus, just watching him, soaking in all of his words. A lot of times, what do we think? That she's airheaded? In every story, all of these stories back to back to back, She's getting yelled at. This is kind of ironic. People are saying, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong, Mary. But what's ironic is Mary's not the one that is getting things wrong. The people that are yelling at Mary are the ones that actually don't understand what they should be doing. The people should actually be listening to Jesus instead of continually missing the point. Those people should be listening to Jesus more. But Mary gets the point. She's soaking in time with Jesus. She's listening to him. I was thinking about this. How many of you have ever been in class and there's somebody who's just the teacher's pet? There's somebody who you just, oh, and some of you are like, that's me. Yeah, I'll totally just raise my hand. That's me. And you think about, oh yeah, in eighth grade, there was so-and-so and they totally sucked up to Mrs. James, guilty, and they, they do what? They follow him around. They help him do everything. When there's a substitute teacher, they suck up to the sub. 
And they do everything. They even start like dressing like the teacher. They start asking all of the questions. They answer everything right because they're what? They're a teacher's pet. And sometimes you get mad at them, but then you're kind of jealous of them and you're like, I wish I was the teacher's pet. I wish she liked me that much. I think as we think about Mary, I was thinking about what Mary was like. I think Mary was kind of like a teacher's pet. Mary was following Jesus around. Every house he goes to, Mary just kind of walks into that house. She wasn't even invited to this party. Mary's sitting at Jesus' feet, trying to see what Jesus is teaching. Everywhere Jesus goes in all of these stories, it's funny because Mary just starts showing up. I have this water and I have this bucket. And this bucket, if you can't see, this bucket's gonna represent you. This bucket represents Mary. It represents our lives. And this is water. This kind of represents life. And then these buckets represent two other things. And I wrote a couple of things on these. This one is gonna represent Jesus. And I think what's unique is Mary is just sitting at the feet of Jesus and what is she doing over and over? She's just sitting there. As Jesus talks, she's just soaking it in. Oh, Jesus, that's, oh, that's a good point. Learning the teachings of Jesus over and over. What's the secret to her kindness? Well, she's learning it. What's the secret to her success? Mary's been there over and over and she's soaking it up. Some of us don't really learn how to be kind because we're not learning it from Jesus. If I were to ask you how much time you spend in the word, if I were to say, and I'm not gonna call anyone out, this is a rhetorical question, but over under on maybe five minutes a day in your Bible app or in your actual Bible, do you spend five minutes in the Bible when you get home at night, when you're doing homework and you take a five minute break? Do you spend five minutes? And then you're like, I don't have time. I don't have time, Byron. I've got so much homework right now. I'm catching up from online and you just don't understand. If I were to look at your screen time report, could you put down YouTube? This is a real question. Could you put down YouTube or could you put down your phone and put down Instagram or close a certain app that's even distracting you from your homework so that you could even download, that's where I do my reading, so that you could download the Bible app, which is free, to do your soaking in with the word so that you could read God's word and spend time with him. And you know, I wasn't even gonna tell this story, but when it started for me, and this is kind of embarrassing, but I'll tell it because I think it's important. I had someone that I was going to school with and he challenged me, he said, Byron, how much time are you spending in the word? And I said, well, I study it every day when I do my homework. I was at seminary school. And he said, no, Byron, you need to be reading your devotions every day. He said, even spend five minutes a day while you're going poop in the morning. And I was like, what? He said, that's what I do. <laughs> so while I was going to the bathroom in the morning, I started spending five minutes a day. And that's how it started, every morning. Some of you are like, what? Yeah, no, that's how it started. If you can start, yeah, someone just said disrespectful. Okay. My challenge to you, if you can spend five minutes a day every morning for the next, what is it, six months till summer, come to me June 1st. I guarantee everyone in this room will see a massive change in your life come June 1st because you started spending five or six minutes a day soaking in God's word over the last six months. You'll be a totally different person. If you start spending 10 minutes or 11 minutes a day in your Bible app. But here's the thing, that wasn't her only secret. She had two secrets, Mary. Her second secret was this. She was soaking in time with other Christians because it's one thing to soak in God's word. That's one thing. You can do, you can do one thing really well, can't you? But she did two things really well. She realized, oh, I can soak in time with Jesus. That's good. I can do this. But when she started soaking in time with God, she started hanging out with other Christians and she realized, oh, I'm hanging out with a lot of Christians because she was known as a prostitute, Mary. And as she hung out with different people, she realized if she's gonna be a different person, she needs to hang out with new people. See, you can have a new life, but it means you have to leave those old friends behind. 
And, and for her, that meant hanging out with new Christians, soaking up what they were gonna do, soaking up a whole new life. My question for you as you see this secret is who's pouring into your life? Who's influencing you? Who's mentoring you right now? Who are you letting pour into you every day? Are they just dripping into you? Because if they are, maybe you need to just go, you know what? I'm not gonna let you pour into me anymore. I'm gonna put you under there and I'm not gonna listen to your words anymore. You're kind of a toxic influence on my life. I don't think you should be allowed in my life anymore and no one's ever like told you you can't talk to me. You've just always kind of been there, but I'm gonna put you under there and you shouldn't be an influence in my life anymore. Do you have people that can start pouring into you? I was at the gym this week and I love observing people. I just kind of people watch when I'm at the gym and I just go, oh, those yoga pants shouldn't be on that man. Uh, I was watching this guy and I told Christine, I was like, he's a, he's a male bodybuilder and I think he's confused about yoga pants. That's a trend for women, not for men. And so then that was just a side note. So I was, I'm at the gym and I'm watching yoga pants, man. And then I see <laughs> this other father and son and I start watching the father and son duo and they're getting it, they're doing their lift and we're both in there for about an hour. And as the father-son duo are finishing up, they go over to the sit-up section at EOS and they're crunching, they're doing their sit-ups for like 10 minutes and I'm like, dang, what an inspiration. And the son takes his phone out and he's like, blue steel, he's just, he's trying to get in some good snaps and I'm like, I mean, he deserves it. He had a good workout. And the dad out of nowhere just goes, bang, and smacks his phone out of his hand really hard. I can't make this up. And his phone just goes, Whoa. and he looks at him and he goes, and the son goes, and I'm like, yeah, so you deserved it. You, should, you, you gotta keep crunching. You missed out on 10 reps. You don't get your phone out in the middle of a workout and your dad is pissed off now. And so the son finally, he walks over, grabs his phone, looks at his dad, sorry, and he keeps doing his crunches. Here's the moral of the story. Who's pouring into you? Who's trying to tell you to be a better person? Who's modeling to you a better life? And even more importantly, Who's showing you how to be a better Christian? Who's telling you to be a better Christian? Who's checking in on you? Who's checking in on your life? I'm gonna keep asking you questions. Who's calling you out? Who's texting you at night and asking you how you're doing? I, I think some of us need a leader to pour into us more, don't we? And if we don't have that, we're gonna feel low, aren't we? Some of us are feeling really spiritually low this morning. Some of us are feeling like we really need that. And my challenge is to go and ask a leader, ask someone in this room, ask a counselor at school. You have guidance counselors. Go ask them to pour into you because if they don't know that you need that, then they can't help you. If your leaders, if your pastor doesn't know, if someone at school, maybe you've been going to a counselor, if they don't know, then they can't help you. If you're like, yeah, I need a mental health check. I need to be filled up. I need to be spiritually filled up. I need to be mentally filled up. I need to be poured into right now. You can't be poured into if that person doesn't know. My challenge to you is that you would go to them and you would just say, hey, can you start pouring into me? Can you start loving on me? Can you start checking in on me at night? Can you start getting coffee with me and meeting with me? Because I, I need some more God in my life. I need some more Bible studies in my life. And I feel really empty. And you know what? If you did that, if you would ask them, that other Christian, that older Christian would start pouring into you more than you know. Here's the thing with Mary, and I will close up. The thing with Mary is, Everyone was always yelling at Mary, saying, Mary, what's wrong with you? 
Her sister was yelling at her, saying, Mary! But Mary was just feeling empty. Mary felt not filled up, like there was something wrong with her. Mary felt empty inside, and that's why she was always hanging out with Jesus. That's why she was trying to soak up Jesus's words. She just wanted to be with Jesus. When I grew up in Africa, what would happen a lot of the times is there would be these huge, huge rainstorms, massive rainstorms. We had a huge rainy season. And in these massive rainstorms, the rains would come and it would pour down for, for three or four or five days at a time. And the rain, what it would do is it would knock out the power where we lived. And so we wouldn't have power. We wouldn't have electricity. We wouldn't even have running water for days at a time. And so since we had four little boys in our house, my mom had to figure out a way to give us baths because she couldn't have four nasty, stinky, slimy boys running around her house. So she had to figure out a way to give us a bath. She had to figure out a way to get us running, drinking water. So what she would do is she would take buckets, it's funny, that looked just like this, and she would line them up along the back porch of our house. And as the rain came for the next two or three days, she would let those buckets collect water over the next two or three days. And as the buckets filled up, she would start to bring those buckets inside and she would heat them up on the stove. And then she would bring them over to the bathtub and she would start to give her nasty, stinky boys a bath. But here's the thing about those buckets. My mom had a choice with these buckets as they got filled up. This one's not full, it got close. Got like right there. She could have been, she had two choices. She could have been a terrible mom and she could have forgot, she could have sat there, she could have stared out the window for seven or eight days and she could have left the buckets outside just watching the rain and been like, oh, this is a really cool rainstorm, just drinking a latte and left these buckets outside while a bunch of stagnant water got in there and mosquitoes and lizards and these buckets could have gotten really gross like this water for the last three weeks. Remember this one from week one. And it could have gotten disgusting and it could have gotten bacteria filled. And then she could have brought it in and thought, oh, maybe I should bathe my boys now. She could have been a terrible mom like that. Or she could have done the right thing and after the first day, brought it in and poured it out on her boys and given her boys a proper bath, which she did. Here's the point. You know what Mary does in that story? Mary pours out all of the love and all of the kindness that is filled up in her heart. And it's like that with us. We get filled up and we get filled up and we get filled up to the point where we're overflowing, where we're just filled up to the brim. And that's my challenge to all of you. You know, all of you, maybe not all of you, but I think a lot of you have been coming to church for a long time, maybe for years and years since you were a kid and you get filled up with Bible knowledge and church knowledge and Jesus knowledge, and you hang out with other Christians and other Christians pour into you and pour into you and pour into you and you're filled up. But if you don't do anything with it, that water will sit there and become stagnant and it becomes gross and it becomes nasty and it becomes useless and it has like bacteria in it and it doesn't help anybody. You know, in that story, Mary, she's actually compared in a weird way to Judas. What does Judas do in the story? He runs off and he sells Jesus. He betrays Jesus in that story because the water inside of him got nasty. He was around Jesus all the time. He heard Jesus's words all the time. He was a disciple, but he never did anything with it. And since that water inside of him became nasty, he did nasty things and he betrayed Jesus. I'm not saying that's what you're gonna do. I'm just saying, let that water inside of you overflow with others. Do kind things for people, let it out. Live love on others. As Christians, we're called to let our love flow to other people. Don't let it store up inside of you. We have to serve other people. I love how at the Grove, we're given opportunities to constantly serve other people. We constantly have opportunities like live love, Thanksgiving boxes. This is Serve the World Month. We have opportunities to go paint. We're gonna be doing all kinds of cool stuff as Youth Tribe next month. And we're gonna be passing out flyers to all you guys. I want every one of you to be participating. 
I wanna go do cool things and love on people in the Live Love community with you. But if you just sit around and let this be something that's inside of you, oh, I'm a Christian, but you don't do anything about it, it's always gonna be inside of you. I hope this is a challenge to you. I hope it's never just head knowledge. And I hope Jesus starts calling you to go love on people that are around you, people that really need it. Can we go ahead and pray? Let's go ahead and bow our heads and close our eyes. God, you challenge us constantly to love on the people around us like Mary. Mary showed her love in, a, in an amazing way, in a way that'll be remembered, the gospel says, forever. Sometimes we think we can't do that, but we can. Mary was just a teenage girl. We can all love like Mary. We can love on the people in our school, in our community, on our teams. We can love on the people in our families. And, and it's so simple. We can do simple acts of love and simple acts of kindness for everybody. Continue to show us, God, how to love on the people in, in our family and how to love on people at school. Give us ideas, God, how to serve people. And we pray all this in your Holy Spirit's name. Amen.